must announce the third baseman. So Rochester is not trying the <laughs> trying something different here. They do have a third baseman, and it's Gabby Medina. And Gabby is joined by Wilson at short, Heinzman at second, and Mia Hadashell at first. The battery is Jaden Field behind the plate and Bria Rensberger in the circle in the outfield is Aubrey Miller in left, Dara Strasser in center, and Braylon Hunter in right. Winnemag going with Decker, Smith, and Warner here in the top of the first inning. One thing we learned about Bria Rensberger on Saturday in that game against Carroll. She's not just a good pitcher, she's a very good competitor. Against Carroll, that, again, they, Carroll has a really good freshman named Emily Justice. She had a two run double off Bria earlier in the game. But the next time Bria faced Justice, she laid down the law, so to speak. She Struck Justice out with runners at second and third with Rochester leading by two runs. And then the next time she struck her out with a player in scoring position. All right, for those of you joining us on Channel 4 here tonight, we welcome you here to Fansler Field, the Rochester Zebras. Getting ready to go here. The Winnemac Warriors will be up to bat first. Beautiful night here in Rochester. Good spring weather finally. First pitch of the game. Strike called to Decker. Isabel Decker hitting 250 on the young season. She's two for eight with one RBI. Oh and two. I think Bria's gained a lot of confidence in that changeup as well. Mm -hmm. um, got her swinging. And that changeup is just a real weapon against slappers. Yeah. And I don't know if that was quite a changeup, but I think it wasn't. She took a little off there. Let him bring up the senior shortstop, Maggie Smith. Maggie, two for four in the young season with a run scored. Ball one. We talked about Maggie. We've talked about Maggie a lot this year. But you know what? We need to be talking about Maggie a lot because she plays five sports. Just keeping up with Maggie is like keeping up with Winnemag. <laughs> with everything that's going on in the town. Of course, she signed with Southern Indiana last week. We're going to run cross country and track at the D1 level. And she's ahead in the count here 2-0. We, we know Maggie is a center fielder, basically her entire varsity crew, but she's playing shortstop today. Two and one the count. Maggie's mom, Steph Smith, assistant coach, Coach Belcher. Of course, Stephanie Smith, just a, a legendary athlete at Winnemac in her own right. Ball three. I think Stephanie Smith still holds the Winnemac all-time record for steals in basketball. Three and one. Ball off three and two, but that was that was a good pitch there. I mean, three and one, and mm -hmm. Maggie's probably thinking about driving something. Had a little bit of a rise to it. Good late movement. Fouled off, and the count hangs at three and two. Yeah, big, uh, big event coming up for Maggie this weekend as the uh, Winnemac Warriors will be hosting their Invitational for track, her second yeah. sport of the spring. 
Base on balls. I'm going to bring up Michaela Werner, the center fielder. Yeah, Michaela got, uh, excuse me, Maggie got beat in the, at the cast and invite on Saturday. Got beat by Autumn Rife from North White. Oh, really? In the 200 meters. Wow. Maggie's running 200. I believe so, yeah. Okay. Uh, I always right. pictured her to be more of a distance. Huizar is running the 100. Yeah. Um, Want to know the count to Werner. Michaela Freshman. Two for seven. Two RBIs in the young season. She's hitting the count here 2-0. and oh. Foul ball. Swing and a miss. Snap throw. And Smith is back. 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two and two. Got her looking. Bring up the junior catcher, Corinne Combs. Combs is one for five on the season. The one hit was a triple against Valley, and it was a she got two RBIs on that in the game Winnemac 165. Strike. Foul ball, and Rens Rensberger heading the count here, 0 and 2. <laughs> Keller on deck. Got 0 and 3, Oscar. Ball, <laughs> and stealing second is Smith. Without a play. One and two to Combs. Fall off. Nice. Got her swinging. Three strikeouts in the first inning for Bria Rensberger. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left at the end of half an inning. No score between Rochester and Winnemac. You're watching RTC TV4. Uh, welcome back here, Fansler Field, as the Zebras will take to the plate here for the first time this evening. Got out of the top of the first, no runs, no hits, no errors for Rochester. So uh, they will be coming up to the plate here in the bottom of the first 0-0 zero, zero score. And I just can't get over how nice it is here tonight, Val. It's just been uh, one of those struggles that we've had trying to get some, some good spring weather. Oh, yeah. Uh, last week we we did, basically didn't have anything Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Because the weather was just so cold. Yeah, this is this is really nice weather for April 9th. First pitch, Roush to Aubrey Miller, strike over the outside corner. And it is Indiana, so don't get too accustomed to it because it'll yeah. probably change tomorrow. Miller will be followed by Wilson and Hunter. A 
fouled off 0-2. We've got a, uh, a busy week on our docket for you with uh, softball and baseball coverage for the Rochester Zebras. We'll be back here again tomorrow night at Fansler as the Zebras host the Berries from Logan Sport. We'll be over at Bob Copeland on Thursday. As uh, two of our schools get together, the Rochester Zebras hosting Pioneer. And then back on Friday as the uh, Zebras will be at Bob Copeland hosting uh, Culver Academy. Fouled off and the count hangs at one and two. Looking will Braden Erickson pitch. What a start of the year for Braden. Six innings, zero hits allowed against Couts. Yeah. And then, unfortunately, it was a 0-0 game after six innings. Pioneer scores one in the top of the seventh, and Couts comes back with two in the bottom of the seventh to win a 2-1. to one. Oh. But Braden was out of the game by the bottom of the seventh. We didn't know if that – I haven't heard if that was like a pitch count thing or – popped up to short. Smith makes the catch. Miller the first out here in the bottom of the first. Let him bring up Aubrey Wilson. Aubrey, the freshman shortstop, is hitting 636 on the young season. Seven for 11, and five of the seven hits have gone for extra base hits. They've gone for extra bases, that is. Three doubles and two triples. She has two RBIs. Swing and a miss. You know, Coach Coleman talks a lot about having an up-the-middle approach, and I think Aubrey really follows that. She did. Ripped to short, caught by Smith. So some tough luck for Aubrey. Two up, two down, and that'll bring up the freshman right fielder, Braylon Hunter. Braylon is hitting 200. She's two for 10, but she has three RBIs. Pitch is high. Hit in the air, right center field. Caught out there by the center fielder. That's Werner, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. End of one inning. No score between Winnemac and Rochester. You're watching RTC TV4. All right, we're back at Fansler Field. No score between Winnemac and Rochester in the top of the second. First pitch, Rensberger to Maggie Keller is fouled off. Keller, the freshman DP for the Lady Warriors, and she'll be followed by Corinne Ulrich and Brody Goodman. Keller on the young season. He's hitting 286. She's two for seven. Two RBIs. Winnemac has two extra base hits as a team compared to Rochester's 10. Again, Winnemac's played one fewer game. Both extra base hits have been triples, one by Keller and one by Combs. 0-2. Got her swinging. Strikeout number four. You know, Steve, I have a reputation for knowing sports facts. Okay. I don't know if you've heard about this. What? So people were coming up to me after the game and asking me, after Bria's 15 strikeouts against Carroll, and asking me when was the last time a Rochester pitcher had 15 strikeouts in a game. And I, as usual, I tried to fake it, pretend that I knew when I didn't really knew, didn't really know. I'm guessing, though, it was Ashley Burris. I think it's been, I think it's been that long. Has it really? It's possible Lexi Holland might have done it. I mean, Lexi, she was sort of a strikeout pitcher. I, yeah. 15 in a game, that sounds like, I don't think, Le, you know, I should probably have, have asked Carmen since we work with Lexi's mom. But I don't think Lexi ever had 15 in a game. I, I would think I would have remembered that. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking it was our girls' basketball coach's wife. I think wow. it was Ashley, back when she was Ashley Lowe back in the day. That was back when that was back when it was uh, only 40 feet between home plate and the pitching oh. rubber. It's 43 feet now. One and two, the count to Corinne Ulrich. Yeah, I have a reputation for knowing sports facts, believe it or not. So somebody stumped you. 
Yeah, but but you didn't you didn't admit it. But so. I didn't, but I didn't yeah. admit it. Yeah. yeah. One and two the count. Got nice a swing change. on the change. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the, the change is really coming along. That's four strikeouts in a row for Rensberger. And five out of the first six uh, Winnemac batters have gone down on strike three. Brody Goodman is the batter. Brody, sophomore, first baseman. Brody is 0 for 3 on the season. Swing and a miss. Brody really had a nice basketball season. Really came along. I thought as kind of a role player off the bench. Mm -hmm. And yeah, added some depth there for Coach Stasiak for sure. Kind of the second player off the bench usually it seemed like. Yeah, had was a good defender. Could handle the ball a little bit. Not a big time scorer. Really had a nice year. 0-2. Oh Goodman it's chokes a... way up on the bat and puts it in play. Ground ball to second. Heinzman to first. Got her. And that retires the side. For Winnemac in the top of the second. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. End of an inning and a half. No score between Winnemac and Rochester. You're watching RTC TV 4. All right. Moving into the bottom of the second here. First pitch from Rosh to Rensberger is in there for a strike. Bria Rensberger will be followed by Jaden Field and Miley Heinzman here in the bottom of the second. Big cut and a miss. 0 oh 2 the count. Got her. Strike on number one for Rosh. Bring in Jaden Field. Jaden hitting 545 on her young career. Freshman catcher, 6'4", 11, three RBIs. One of those six hits was a double. The other five hits singles. Swing and a miss. Looks like Raj is attacking that outside corner at the knees and getting some success here. Called off. Got uh, the baseball team, big non-conference game tonight for them as they're up at Plymouth taking on the Pilgrims. Yeah, uh, Zebras lost at home to Plymouth last year, so I'd be curious to see. But I think I think I'm pretty sure they won at Plymouth two years ago. Got her swinging and a change. I know uh, Manzuk, the pitcher, was he was money from uh, the, the mound and from the plate last year for yeah. Plymouth and he graduated so but there's a there's a really good group there that that group that's a, a junior that junior class same class as Rochester junior class remember they they went at it quite regularly back in the day in the in the town and country uh, mm -hmm. state tournament those those kids did so Rochester went two and one at the uh, Eastern, the Howard County invite over the weekend, finished in third place out of eight teams. Fly ball to right center field. And another way unable to make the catch is Werner and sliding in safely at second in it is Heinzman. What are we going to call that? I think we're going to call that a double. That was a tough play. Werner had to go a long way for it. Mm, I don't know. Yep. I, I, you're, you're calling it a hit? Double it is for Miley Heinzman. That'll bring up Gabby Medina. Medina hitting 200, 2 for 10. She has a single and a double, and she scored two runs. Gabby looked a lot more comfortable on Saturday than she did in that Mishawaka game. She's, she's going to hit. That is ripped to left center field, but caught to retire the side. Piper Link right there to handle it. For Rochester in the bottom of the second. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. End of two innings. No score between Winnemac and Rochester. You're watching RTC TV 4. Back at Fansler Field, it'll be Link, Walters, and Decker. 
to you for Winnemac here in the top of the third. No score. Rensberger has retired five in a row since she walked Smith in the first inning. Strike. Piper Link is 0 for 5 on the season. Well, we talked about Brody Goodman on the basketball court. What do your Piper had? Made an honorable mention, all RTC. Yeah, another one of the you know many Winnemac players. I guess it's kind of a requirement if you're going to play basketball at Winnemac, you got to play really tough defense. And Piper was definitely a yeah. tough defender. She always got rebounds kind of outside of her area. Mm hmm. And had an underrated some underrated post moves. Obviously, she Marissa Iverson was kind of their go-to post player, but they can get the ball to Piper in the post as well. That's a tongue twister. Two and two to come. <coughs> ball three. If that was a curveball, maybe a change. The Piper is uh, choked way up on that bat there, almost to the top of the tape with her right hand. Goodman did that too last inning. Got her looking. I'm not sure what Link was looking for there, but she was fooled. That'll bring up the third baseman, Lindsey Walters. First pitch to Walters. She shows bunt and pops it foul. Walters is 0 for 5 on the season, but she does have an RBI. Getting sectionals back here starting May 20th. Yeah. Believe it or not, the sectional draw is April 28th. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, they, it's, it's going to be... The draw is less than three weeks away. Obviously, they do the draw early. Strike. I know Paul Nydick has said what he wants it to... So people can make alternative plans or if there's... I, I like it, you know, like they do in basketball where you, you draw and, boy, you're pretty much ready to go right away. You don't have a whole lot of time to dwell on it. Fouled off 0-2 to count. Fouled off. I do want to uh, send out congratulations to our senior producer, Dakota Hayden. Became a father on Saturday morning. So uh, awesome. Also, uh, Scotty King, who has been a longtime RTC employee, is Dakota's father in law. So he became a grandpa. So, 10 pound baby boy. Yeah. <laughs> Strikeout number seven for Rensberger as she fans Walters. So seven strikeouts the first time through the order. Let's see what adjustments they make now as the, or the lineup turns over to senior second baseman Isabel Decker. She offered 0-1. Interesting where Medina's playing. She's just covering her shadows over the foul line. Foul off 0 and 2. And it looks like Aubrey Wilson took a little step over to that 5 6 hole. So you're kind of asking Bria to cover, if she goes up the middle, Bria to kind of cover that to that one or two steps to her right. Mm hmm. Round ball to second. Hines been to how to shell, and that retires the side. Eight in a row retired by Bria Rensberger. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. End of two and a half. No score between Winnemac and Rochester. You're watching RTC TV4.
All right, back here at Fansler, moving into the bottom of the third. Uh, pitcher's duel here between the Zebras and the Warriors so far, Val. Yep. Um, Roush has been good. The defense has been good, though. And that ball is hit up the middle. That's a basic, except for that, I mean, no errors from Winnemac, of course. Because of that bloop double by Heinzman. And Rochester now has their second hit. That'll bring up Dara Strasser. Let's see if Dara is in the mood to bunt here. Yeah. Strasser two for six on the year with two runs scored. Actually, I had Dara going three for three against Pioneer. So I think again, somebody again charging, thinking this is Division One softball and charging people with errors when they <laughs> they're actually hits. My goodness, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> We're gonna have to get a we're gonna have to get a mediator in here. Dara's <laughs> batting average supposedly three thirty three, but you know Dara was flexed at the start of the season, but she's been in the lineup these last two games, so she's been hitting the ball with authority of late. When you well, say flex at the start of the season, that was one game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. To be clear, yeah. Strike. So some big some big college basketball news involving Cream Abdul Jabbar. C R E A M, A.K.A. Larry Nerd, <laughs> A.K.A. Robbie. I hadn't I hadn't heard the cream, A.K.A. Robbie Avila, who is entered the transfer portal today. He's leaving Indiana State. Throw to second, save it. Actually, the throw hit Mia. Mia with the stolen the base. Stolen oh, Mia is gonna be Mia is gonna demand that that be like in the headline <laughs> of the, my article. Runner at second, nobody out. So let, and now three and one, the count to Strasser. Base on balls. First and second, nobody out. So Robbie Avila is transferring from Indiana State, and he put apparently you can put a do not contact order on your when you go to the transfer portal, and that's what he did, and so that almost. He already he's, knows where he's going. He's going to St. Louis with Coach Shirts, no doubt about that. But in the air, it does drop. Going to be a tough play, no play. Throw back to third, safe. Bases loaded, nobody out. Well, this is what this is what you want if you're the Lady Z's. Your best slugger up at the plate with the bases loaded and nobody out. Wilson lined it shorter first time. Base Swings and misses at the first pitch. Oh. Ball three. Loaded. Like your baked potato. Aubrey hit second against Carroll. She had lead off in the order against Pioneer. Line drive, right center field, base hit. It's going to score one. Here comes the second runner trying to score. Safe. And then Miller overruns the bag. She gets caught in a pickle. Throw back to third. Safe. Two-run single for Aubrey Wilson. She goes to second on the throw. And Rochester leads it two to nothing. Braylon Hunter, the batter. Braylon flew out to center her first time up. Reset. Strike. Strike. Foul on the bunt, 0 and 2. Yeah, so with Miller out against Pioneer, basically everybody moved up a spot in the batting order. Miller hit leadoff. Or excuse me, Wilson hit leadoff. Hunter at second. Rensberger at third field hit cleanup. Ball high and outside, one and two. It's 
good to see Aubrey Wilson running the base as well. She almost ran, <laughs> ran them a little too well there. Got caught in a pickle, was able to get back to third. Fly ball, center field. Werner catches. Here comes Miller trying to score. Throw to the plate, goes over, combs his head. It'll be a sacrifice fly. Wilson takes a big turn at third. She'll hold there. Sacrifice fly for Braylon Hunter. And it's now three to nothing. Runner at third, one out for Rensberger. Rhea with a close stance. And that left foot kind of in the side chalk of the batter's box. 1 0. Mentioned the baseball team at Pine Plymouth, the girls' tennis team hosting Valley. Yeah, they're coming off of a big, big victory at the. Uh, John Glenn Invitational on Saturday. Yeah, and I believe that's this is Valley season opener tonight. Is it? Of course, they have our the reigning RTC Girls Tennis Player of the Year, Kerrigan Callahan. Going to be taking on Ella McCarter at one singles. Yeah, Ella had a good day on Saturday. Went three and zero. Yeah, she did. Off yeah. to a really good start. Two and one. They're they're going to be busy. We talk about having uh, a busy you know short season. I think they have uh, three matches this week scheduled. Yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, thir yeah, today, Wednesday, and Thursday. You got to make up, uh, I'm saying they got Whitco at home tomorrow. Or? Then they got, I know they got, they're at North Judson on Thursday. Two and two the count to Bria Rensberger. Hunter and Emily Ackerman have really done a nice job with that Valley Girls tennis program. Popped up, foul. Playable and caught by Goodman. Big out there for Roush. Two down, hanging on to third is Wilson. And that will bring up Jaden Field. Field struck out her first time. Ball. Decker plays kind of over in that 3-4 hole. So field goes up the middle here to the left of Roush. She should be able to find a hole, but she's swings and misses there, so the count is 1-1. One and one. Is it 1-1 one one or 0-2? Oh yeah, it's 1-1. One Field tries to bunt her way on and fouls it off. We haven't seen Jaden Field try and bunt, much less bunt with two outs. Rochester track team in action tonight. They're at Manchester. It's a three-way meet that involves also involves Wabash. Fouled off. Everybody's going tonight. Yeah. Picked a good night to to have a outdoor sport going. Right. Have, have not had a lot of those, so and the track team's going to be busy this week. Round ball, shortstop Smith throws to Goodman for the out, and that retires the side. But a good third inning for Rochester. Well they said. score three on three hits, no errors, and one left. The end of three innings, Rochester leads Winnemac 3 to nothing, and you're watching RTC TV4. All right, the Zebras put three on the board in the bottom of the third. Now lead 3-0 as we move into the top of the fourth here. Warriors looking to try and get some runs on the board. Still uh, held scoreless here. And, in fact, they have been held hitless. The only base runner, Maggie Smith, walked with one out in the first inning. And she'll lead it off here in the top of the fourth, and she'll be followed by Warner and Combs. Winnemag baseball team suffered a tough loss last night. Lost to Carroll 10-3. to Look at Carroll. The Cougars are always really solid on the baseball. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> that was at Carroll. 1 0 the count. And the Hoosier North, uh, I'm really curious to see baseball wise. You know, I, I think for a long time, you know, it was like Triton and Culver were kind of down here, and it was kind of pick up your four wins against Triton and Culver. I don't think it's going to be that way this year. I think both of those programs are pretty improved. I saw, saw a little bit of Triton play last night against Valley. They look to be a much improved. I mean, they showed signs of improvement last year. They're getting better. And Culver, I think, again, they're so young. I mean, they were really, really, really young last year. They're just really young this year. <laughs> but they've got... Again, I like both McEwen brothers on the mound. Chopper, shortstop. Wilson throws, wild throw. Heading for second is Smith. And she's in there. That'll be an infield single and an E6. Once Wilson bobbled that, she was in trouble. Werner struck out her first time up. Takes the ball. Swing and a miss, one and one. And the throwback to the pitcher's drop, throw to third, safe. Call that what an E1. You agree with that one, Oscar? I do. Okay. E1, Val. <laughs> Count as one and one. Ball two. So runner at third, nobody out. Yeah, that was a good that was a good statement there. Oscar just said Smith speed creates issues. That's that's a, a true statement in a lot of sports. But Medina, oh, I like turns that. Turns around, throws back to third, out. Fielder's choice, five six. That was a really headsy play there by Medina. Wow. Looked like she was going to first and kind of did a, a throw, a fake throw there and able to get the out there on the lead runner at third. That was We saw Kylie Coleman do that once or twice, didn't we not? But Kylie Coleman, what's what's Medina? She what year is she? She's a freshman. Yeah. <laughs> She's <laughs> Kylie Coleman was a senior when she did that. Yep. Combs follows that one off. Yeah, it was a freshman freshman combo there, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah Mr. Rini, good point there. It was two seniors that did it with uh, with Kylie. Two freshmen that just did it there. Yeah. Count as one and one on Combs. Base hit right field. Moving up to second and stopping there is Weaver. Excuse me, Werner. Werner moves up to second on the base hit by Combs. First and second with one out for Maggie Keller, the freshman DP. Maggie struck out her first time up. So first time through the order, Rensberger struck out seven of the nine batters that she faced. Second time through the order, he hasn't had any strikeouts out of four batters. They've all put it in play. But try that as foul. Three nothing Rochester here, top of the fourth. 
Called off. Coach Belcher kind of went up to, looked at Maggie Keller and kind of pointed at her knees and kind of said, like, swing it. I think that was her way of saying swing it strikes. Got her swinging with a rise ball. And didn't really listen. That one was, yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, the rise ball, you, you think it's there. And that was a nice rise there by Rensberger. Strikeout number eight. Let will bring up Corinne Ulrich, the sophomore right fielder. Corinne 0 for 4 in the season, including that strikeout. Adriana Hall enters the game at first base, courtesy runner for the catcher. Swing and a miss. Like a change or maybe yeah. like a curve, more like a change. That was a change for sure, mm -hmm. yeah. That was a nice one. <laughs> I will say as as Bria uh, works on that, you know, her arm motion, you can see it coming off of her arm, but the difference in speed maybe is, is so different that it's hard for the batter to recognize. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it has a lot of uh, velocity loss versus her fastball. That is for sure. And then she follows it up with a rise ball. Gets a swing and a miss on that 0-2. Field throw through right down to Aubrey Wilson. Nice job laying off the rise there on that one. And a busy week for the Lady Z's. Home with Logan Sport tomorrow at Triton Thursday. Home with Culver on Friday. Hopefully. Sounds like the weather's going to probably play a factor in, in later in the week. Rensberger misses inside to Ulrich. Count now two and two. And again, Field throws down to shortstop, even though Aubrey wasn't covering the bag. Just making sure everybody's paying attention. Yeah. Ball three. Corinne Ulrich had a pretty nice season on the basketball court for Winnemac. Mm -hmm. Good three-point shooter. All right back. Soft liner caught by Rensberger to retire the side. 4 Winnemac in the top of the fourth. No runs, two hits, two errors, and two left. End of three and a half innings. Rochester 3, Winnemac 0. You're watching RTC TV 4. Yeah. Heinzman, Medina, and Howdeshell do up for Rochester here in the bottom of the fourth. We're back at Fansler Field. I'm Val, joined by Steve and Chris on production. 0-1 the count. Bunch of middle-aged men, happy that some 14-year-old girls can relate to the same songs that they did back when they were that <laughs> age. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm way past middle age, Val. I, I'm not seeing myself making it to 96. Oh, oh. I tell you what, Val, the, uh, the, the, the defensive effort by Rochester there in the top of the fourth from a bunch of uh, really young kids, that was pretty impressive. Yeah. They, they could have let some runs across there for Winnemac, and they didn't. That play by Medina was, was impressive. You know, I interviewed Miley after the Carroll game, and she was, dare I say it, bashful? Hmm. She was... Pop up to short, and Smith makes the catch. Like she was really like, I needed to get a lot better as a hitter. I've, and I, 
she talked about a lot of doing a lot of T work since last year. Mm-hmm. And I talked with Coach Coleman, and he said Miley's confidence is just she's just her mindset is just much different this mm-hmm. year. And it took a really nice play by Addie Kripe out in center field to, with um, Pioneer leading eight to seven in the seventh inning to. Uh, I don't know if you'd say rob her, but it was just a really nice running catch by. And because I mean Miley, she was really the hottest bat in Rochester's lineup in that Pioneer game. They they had they had all kinds of trouble trying to get her out. Comes one and zero to Gabby Medina. Medina lined out to the left her first time, lined out to Link. It wasn't missing Link. It was right at Link. Ball, 3-0. Track team, they're talking about the Rochester track team, they get a busy week. They have a home meet with Whitco on Thursday. I mentioned they're at Manchester night, home with Whitco on Thursday. Travel to Oak Hill for the Oak Hill relays on Saturday. So yeah. Base on balls. Medina walks with one out. I'm going to bring up Mia Hadeshell. Fouled off 0 and 1. You know, 3 for 11 on the season, including that base hit back last inning. She singled and scored. You have a score? 0 and 2 the count. Popped up, left side, Smith makes the catch. Medina holds on at first. Two down. Well, Mr. Reen just gave us a scoring update from Plymouth Val. A little bit different situation up there. 7 6 Plymouth with the lead in the middle of the second. Yeah. A little different than the uh, 3 0 score we have here at Fansler. Strasser falls off the first pitch. Right. Rochester's the pitching situation for the baseball team is going to be something we have to keep an eye on. We know the number one is Reinerts. We know the number two is Pollock. And then after that, we're going to see. Mm-hmm. Uh, even Corey Good said, I'm just throwing them all out there and seeing what we got. Mm-hmm. Uh, how they respond to certain situations. Um, strike 0-2. Oh you know, we've seen... You know, Brady Coleman's gotten a little bit of mound time. Parker Casper's gotten a little bit of mound time. Brant Beck's got a little bit of mound time. Really? Um, yeah, they definitely got a little younger than they were last year. That is for sure, but still a lot of talent there for those Zebras. Strasser goes down swinging. That is strikeout number three for Roush, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. At the end of four innings, it's Rochester three and Winnemag zero. You're watching RTC TV4. Back here at Fansler as we move into the top of the fifth. The Warriors still trying to get on the board here as they trail three to nothing over the against the Rochester Lady Zebras here. Been a Rochester's done it. A, a, you know, Rensberger's been pitching well, and, and they've uh, she's gotten a lot of help from her uh, her mates there in the field as well on the defensive end. Val. Yeah, I think this is even though they committed two errors that last inning, I think. They made up for it with some good plays as well, and this team's gaining some confidence defensively. Goodman, Lincoln, Walters do up for Winnemac here in the top of the fifth, seven, eight, and nine. Both of these teams are in Class 2A, sectional 37. Pioneer and Lewis Cass are also in that section, and those two teams are meeting tonight at Lewis Cass. Still waiting for a scoring update from that game. Obviously, Lewis Cass, the defending sectional champion, beating Pioneer in the sectional final. Yeah, that was still a little bit of a, a shock there. Lewis Cass was able to come out of this sectional. But uh, softly hit grounder, barehanded pickup, throw, out. Oh, wow. Good play 
I thought she was. I thought she was going to be safe, but uh, great play there and gets the call. To bring up Piper Link. Link struck out looking her first time up. Strike. Nice job by Mia Hadishal on the play, too. I think she had to stretch out a little bit to catch that. You know, Mia hasn't played a ton of first base in her career. Obviously, with Maddie Heinzman, she basically played there basically for a year and a half straight. Mm hmm. Yeah, Mia spent a lot of time in the circle her first two seasons for the uh, mm -hmm. Zebras. One and one to Link. Ball two. That way you Kind of a funny sound off the bat, like off the end of the bat maybe. Foul yeah. ball, foul yeah. ball, and it kind of was two and two on Link. Well, the the bats nowadays make that funny sound all the time, but yeah, I think that was right off the uh, end of that one. And choking way up a little bit of a split grip. Popped up, foul, out of play, and the count hangs at two and two. Hmm. Waiting on the thump on the roof for that one. Didn't hear it. So Pioneer at Lewis Cast tonight, home with Delphi Thursday, home with Western Friday, and home with North Miami on Saturday. And then home with these Lady Warriors on Monday. So four at Lewis Cast tonight, and then four in a row at home. Three and two, the count to Link. And of course, Western's got that, I'm trying to remember her name, that sophomore is just an incredible hitter. She led the state in homers last year as a freshman or came really close. Hmm. Hit about 20, I think. Yeah. I, I do not recall that. I have hard enough time keeping track of the names of the players that we cover. Got her looking. Strike on number nine. You know, as we as we get going with uh, TRC play starting uh, what next week, it's going to be kind of interesting to see what the conference looks like. You know, it's it's been North Miami's conference for the last several years, and uh, you know, can they can they continue that for their final season here in the conference, or you know, who's going to step up and and be the the big dog in the in the TRC this I year? I think that well, Rochester's conference opener is coming up. Next Wednesday, April 17th, and those Southwood and Lady Knights will be here, and I think they're going to have something to say about it. Yeah, got Southwood on that list. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not, uh, I wouldn't, I'm not going to say they're the favorite. I think North Miami is the favorite until somebody beats them. Mm -hmm. But I think Southwood's going to be pretty solid. I mean, they were the nucleus of that team was freshmen last year. Yeah, now they're sophomores. Yeah. But they're not the only team that's going to have something to say about it. I mean, I think Manchester is much improved. But throw to first. That was a fair ball in time. 2-3. And that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. And to four and a half. Rochester leads Winnemac 3 to nothing. You're watching RTC TV4. Back here at Fansler, moving into the bottom of the fifth. The Rochester Zebras continue to put the uh, zeros on the board against the, uh, or they put, Winamax putting the zeros on the board against Rochester. The Zebras are leading 3 0 here and looking to add maybe some runs here in the bottom of yeah. the number five. This is a big inning for Roush. This is now third time through the batting order. So these pitchers have had it. They're the hitters of Rochester had a chance to make an adjustment. You're down by three. I don't know if you can afford to fall behind much further. And Miller ahead in the count here, 1-0. Oh. 
Yeah, three looks like a big number right now. Just been a, a struggle for Winnemac to, to get base runners, and they obviously haven't been able to put anybody across the plate. Ball two. So Aubrey looking at her wrist, wristband, or I guess shoulder band. It's a lot of that. Little flare to left center field. That will drop for a base hit. Miller's going to try for second. The throw. She's out. Oh. Good play there by Winnemac. Miller got a little bit uh, greedy there. Wanted to go for two, and Winnemac able to get that out. Well, I know talking with Coach Coleman that Aubrey hurt herself on the s sliding mm -hmm. in the second base against Carroll. So she yeah. might be reluctant to slide, or she might have even been told, just don't slide. Right. 0-1 oh, the count to Aubrey Wilson. Because the, the running part looked fine. It mm -hmm. was the, the not sliding part that was a problem. Mm -hmm. And a nice throw by Piper Link. Right. No, it was a good defensive play for sure. Foul ball. Zero and two, the count to Wilson, who has lined a short and hit a two-run single her last time up. Foul ball. Count hangs at zero and two. Baseball update, Rochester and Plymouth are tied 8-8, eight, eight, bottom of the third. All right. Ball. 9-8, middle of the third. Rochester's up. All right. So they tied it and have uh, taken the lead. Two and two the count. Brant Beck two for two with an RBI. Brady Coleman two for two with two RBIs and, and a walk. A little flare to right field. It'll drop foul. Count hangs at two and two. Well, Val, the Boilers not able to get it done last night. They they lose in the natty, but uh, got to give them a, a lot of credit for a, a great season. And I, honestly, I mean, UConn was the better team. Yes, I mean, Purdue had the better player, but UConn had the better team, and they deserved to win that championship. But boy, it was a it was a great run, and you know, just congratulations to the Boilers on. Just a fantastic season. To go through all six games in the NCAA tournament and win them all by double digits, Yeah, that's rare. Yeah, UConn's in it two years in a row, 12 straight NCAA tournament games all by double digits. The closest game was what, Alabama 13? Is that right? Yeah, Four, 14, 86-72, yeah. yeah. Second out of the inning there. And that might be the first strikeout of Aubrey Wilson's career. That was a little change-up or a breaking ball. Nobody on two out for Braylon Hunter, who is 0 for 1 with an RBI. Yeah, I mean, again, I know there was a lot of people focusing on the behavior of Dan Hurley, but what I saw from the players of UConn is that they're pretty selfless, mm -hmm. and they don't care who scores, and they make each other's jobs easier. I thought the players handled, handled themselves better than the coach yeah. did, honestly. Um, I mean that Newton Tristan Newton is like a first team all American but doesn't doesn't play with any ego out there. Mm hmm Ooh, that was a nice change. Yeah. So Big East Conference won both the NIT and the NCAA tournament. Seton Hall won the NIT. Yeah. Yeah. Beating Indiana State and UConn won the NCAA tournament. Both teams beat a team from the state of Indiana. Line drive to center. Caught by Warner. 
And that retires the side. For Rochester in the bottom of the fifth. No runs. One hit, no errors, nobody left. At the end of five innings, it's Rochester 3 and Winnemac 0, and you're watching RTC TV 4. All right, back here at Fansler moving into the sixth. The Zebras remain in front 3-0 over the Warriors. So a little more opportunities here for Winnemac. They're running out of uh, chances here. We're Only six more outs to go. That was a big inning for Roush, and obviously helped out by the good defense by Link throwing out Miller, trying to stretch a single into a double. So she puts a zero up on the board. Now the Winnemac lineup turns over. Now this is their third time through the order with Decker, Smith, and Werner due up in Combs. Uh, hoping for a shot this inning as well. Yeah. In that Rochester-Plymouth baseball game where we're kind of disputing what the score is, according to Game Changer, it's 8-8. But Colton Faverda has homered for Rochester in that game. Hmm. You know, it's interesting watching Brady Beck. I, I was joking with him, you know, in wrestling – Brady's like 250, 255, and at state he's wrestling all these 280 pound guys. I said, Brady, in wrestling you're like kind of kind of small looking, mm. but in in baseball you're the biggest guy on the field. Yeah. And I was talking to some of the coaches, and they said, well, well, I guess we'll talk about this when we do some zebra baseball games later in the week. But they said, hardest working kid on the team, Brady Beck. Huh. They said, they said we don't know a whole lot about wrestling, but we we see why he was so good in that because he. <laughs> Yeah, He can't get enough ground balls. He can't get enough time in the cage. He's playing organized baseball for the first time since he was 12. Yeah. And now he's a senior. And that's not easy. I tried to do that my senior year. It's mm -hmm. not easy. I made it about two weeks, and I said, yeah, I'm just going to go do some work because mm -hmm. this isn't working. <laughs> Three and one on the count to Decker. Strike two, good pitch. Baseball is a – it's one of those sports that you put it down for a couple of years and – Right, so much it, muscle memory involved. And yeah. You, and they pitch a little bit faster in high school than they did when you are playing 12-year-old. Got her looking. Rensberger was down in the count three and one and came back to strike her out. That's her tenth strikeout. And she has retired six straight batters now. Now Maggie Smith will bat. She has walked, and she has reached on an infield single. She was involved in maybe the key defensive play in this game for Rochester when she got thrown out trying to retreat back to third on that bunt try by Werner. Back in the fourth inning. She thought she could draw a throw from Medina to first base and cruise on in, and mm -hmm. Gabby Medina turned around and threw back to Wilson at third and got her on the fielder's choice. One and one the count. I was looking at the Anderson University softball team stats. Yeah. Um, a lot of local uh, local flair on that team this year. Bell Blickenstaff really playing well. Yeah. Um, she's got, of all the local players on that team, she's gotten kind of the most playing time. Okay. More so than Kylie Coleman. Maddie Smith has, hasn't played that much, and I'm kind of wondering if she's been hurting or something. Um, foul ball. Or maybe there's just somebody in the head of her in the pecking order, but right. Um, but yeah, Bell Buck and staff hitting pretty well there. And I think you know Bell was kind of one of those players, who's maybe kind of a late bloomer. Mm -hmm. Well, she she was and, dinged and up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, part of that I think was yeah, yeah, just her health. Got her looking. Wow. Strikeout number eleven. Yeah, she. I mean, she basically her junior year she was out. Mm -hmm. The whole year from mm -hmm. softball because of the, that injury she had. Yeah, I think she had an ACL, didn't she? Yeah. And missed basketball season and, yeah. That will bring up the center fielder, Michaela Werner. She struck out looking and reached in the fielder's choice. Swing and a miss.
Well, we got uh, Strasser playing a little bit too uh, shaded to the right there a little bit. You can see her in the uh, left side of our camera shot there. One and one. Fouled off. One and two. Winnemac has two hits, both in the fourth inning. An infield hit by Smith and a base hit to right by Combs. Run ball, first base. Knocked on my hottest shell. Flips. Got her. A 3-4 put out on the ground out. One, two, three. Good job by Heinzman coming over and covering first there. Yeah. At the end of five and a half innings, it's Rochester three and Winnemac zero, and you're watching RTC TV four. Welcome back here, Fansler Field, as we move into the bottom of the sixth. Rochester got three runs, Val, in the bottom of the third, but the uh, rest of the scoreboard has zeros across. So, been a really good job on the defensive side of things for Rochester, and you know, other than the third inning, uh, Winmac's done a really good job too. Yeah, Roush has done a nice job. We have a scoring update. It is all over at Caston. Lady Comets defeat Culver 16 to nothing in five innings. Okay. Caston now 2-0 in the air. Yes, Caston's back in action after <laughs> playing their first game in 19 days today. 2-0 the count to Rensberger. She'll be followed by Field and Heinzman. Rhea Rensberger has struck out swinging and fouled the first baseman. Fouled off. Baseball update, Wabash leads cast in 4-3, top of the third. Comet Baseball lost a doubleheader to Manchester the other day, 6 to nothing and 7-5. to five. Hmm. And I think the Manchester baseball team could be much improved. Swing and a miss. So Rensberger was heading the count 2-0, and oh, but Roush has come back, and it's 2-2 two and two now. Got her swing. It was not caught. Combs throws to Goodman to complete the strikeout. Strikeout number five for Roush. One up, one down here in the bottom of the sixth. I'm going to bring up Jaden Field. Jaden has struck out and grounded to short. Ground ball shortstop, nice pick. Smith to Goodman for the out. Roush has retired four in a row. The number one pitcher is the freshman, Adriana Hall. Low and inside to Heinzman. Miley has doubled and popped to short. Miley talked a lot about, she, boy, she just misses her sister. Mm. That, and that's been part of the adjustment, too. Tries to butter way on. Throw by Roush to Goodman is in time for the out. Good the Heinzman Heinz kids must be different than mine. <laughs> they, <laughs> she misses her sister. Yeah. Hmm. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. End of six innings, and Rochester leads Winnemac 3 to nothing. and you're watching RTC TV 4. Back here at Fansler as the Zebras try and close this one out here, leading 3-0 in the top of the seventh, but Winnemac has Combs coming up to the plate, Val. And that's why it was so big to uh, get a 1-2-3 inning last inning. That means Combs has to lead off this inning and hit with nobody on base. She is one for two. She has struck out swinging and single. And that cast in 16 to nothing win over Culver. Kylie Logan had a homer in the game. A single. In fact, she also had a single and a double. Round ball up the middle. Wilson throws to first in time. Nice stretch there by Howdashell at first. Really like uh, how she's playing that. Yeah. 
and like you said, hasn't had a whole lot of time there at first base. And nice job of stretching out. That's a big out, getting Combs out on uh, out number one here for the Zebras. Maggie Keller has struck out both times up. So, so she, she was one uh, a triple away from getting the cycle. A triple away from the cycle. A yeah. single, a double, a homer, and six RBIs. Oh, wow. Alexa Finke went two for two. And, boy, if she can, if they can get Finke, get her hitting even better, boy, that's really going to lengthen out their lineup. Again, Logan has been hitting third in the batting order, which is kind of where um, Kinsey Mollenkopf was hitting last year. So mm -hmm. and you have, they need that protection for Zumpelman and Scales. Mm -hmm. So uh, Logan's been hitting third, and Annie Harsh has been hitting cleanup. So they've got to produce. It's their year to produce, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 2 no. Oh, nice play. Nice play by Hadeshell. Feels on the shortstop and wins the race to the bag. Two up, two down. Winning back down to their final out. And it'll be Corinne Ulrich who will try to keep it going. She has struck out on line to the pitcher. Really good play there by Mia to get that out. And Nine in a row retired by Rensberger. Since that base hit by Combs. This feels like a, a big early season game for Rochester. They can get this win. I sense that kind of. Uh, I think Coach Coleman gave them quite a quite a pregame speech in the dugout, from what I could tell. I, I think psychologically, it means a lot more to Rochester. One and one, the count. Well, they get him back to 500 when uh, as Logan Sport comes to town tomorrow. And yeah. Like you said, busy schedule. They go to Triton on Thursday. Maybe. Weather sounds like it's going to be a little iffy on Thursday. Thursday sounds like the worst day of the week weather-wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you never know. That might be wrong. Just a 92% chance. I mean, that still means there's a 8% chance that it won't rain, right? <laughs> <laughs> the 1-2. Ball two. Hmm. Yeah. Looking forward to a baseball game on Thursday night for the Zebras, so. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing Pioneer baseball in action with Coach Hardy. and um, They gave it a great run last year. That Hoosier North, I think, is going to be pretty wide open. I think we talked about, talked about Triton and Culver earlier. I've been mm -hmm. Pioneer and got her looking, and the ball game is over. And the Lady Z's win it. Bria Rensberger. Well, we're going to wrap things up here for tonight. For uh, Caleb Wilson on our camera out in the outfield. For Chris Bake doing the production tonight. For Val, I'm Steve Stricker. Good night here from Fansler where the Zebras win 3-0 over the Winnemac Warriors. Have a good evening, everybody.